Hello, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. And today I was actually browsing around on Mobilitics trying to find something cool and different I could play for today's video. And I come across this uh, gentleman's deck called the Harrowing Darius by Coach MC. It's basically a deck that revolves around pretty aggressive tools. We have like the Spider Package, we have like the Wraith Callers and Shadow Isles cards, as long as as well as Darius. But then at the top end. We're running the Harrowing, and that card's fucking awesome. I like the flavor of the deck. It still feels pretty strong against aggro decks, so even if it might seem off meta, it definitely will uh, beat up on aggro decks with the pretty standard uh, Shadow Isles tools like Grass with Undying and Withering Whale. But we'll go more into detail about the deck very shortly. Also, guys, just want to mention uh, if you are over on Twitch, you can come find me. I'm streaming uh, Friday to Tuesday, 3 30 p.m. AEDT time, which tends to be quite late for some of the viewers, especially over in the US and A. I do apologize, but I am just living down here in Australia where time zones are cooked as uh, maybe things will change in the future as we adjust the schedule. But anyway, let's jump across, have a look at the deck list, go into a bit of detail with the cards, and then we'll see if we can win some games. Thanks, guys. Okie dokie. So obviously, uh, our champion cards will be uh, Darius as well as Elise. We're pretty much running the uh, Noxus and Shadow Isles, obviously, for those. And we have pretty much a majority of the Spider cards. Starting at the top, we have three copies of Harrowing, which is pretty crazy for three copies. I mean, uh, after having my... I've already played the games, obviously, I had the experience. I think there could be some adjustments to improve the deck, but I'm not going to destroy the originality of it for this video. So the Harrowing is going to be three copies of... This is just, you know it's the flavor of the deck it's the fact that you know we're an aggressive deck that can have some late game threats and when we're, especially in a ladder environment where our opponents do not know what deck we're exactly playing or the cards that we have you can punish people by running three copies of the harrowing it's going to help us a lot in control matchups especially when players uh people are running you know minimum maximum sorry two denies i see quite often and then sometimes more often than not they're running one deny harrowing finds a lot of value against control decks and pretty much can burn them out uh, Ruination will be one copy of, you know, Shadow Isles. We have pretty much all the Shadow Isles tools here. One Vengeance, Ruination, Withering Whale, Grasby Undying. Two of each here. That's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, Darius is going to be three copies of. This is kind of one of the hearts of the deck. So, you know, we want to have three copies of him so we can draw into him consistently. One of the more interesting texts I see here is Culling Strike. Um, this could be changed for like Friends of Skidera or something like that if you don't have Culling Strike. But you probably do. It's only a rare. But it does kind of a little bit impact the you know, the Wraith Caller uh, averages, but you know, I like to keep, if I'm running like a Allegiance, I like to keep six and under for our uh, Allegiance buff chances, but you know, the chances are you're probably going to hit it. It won't be too detrimental. It won't be too backbreaking if you don't hit it in this list because we are a bit of a top end heavy deck, but you know, Calling Strike is actually pretty powerful. It has found me quite good uses when we needed it. Uh, we skipped over Broad Awakening here. Spiders, Broad Awakening makes sense. I think this is a pretty staple in the spider deck that is in Shadow Wilds. So nothing to change there. Uh, Wraith Caller, I mean, pretty powerful. He has like the Mist Wraith plus Wraith Caller package. It works. And there's not much else that's quite kind of as good for tempo. So I like it. It helps you curve out. We are pretty short on the three drops here, but hopefully you can find like floating mana can kind of like uh, lean you into Broad Awakening a little bit. So that's not much of a problem there that we float mana on turn two, uh, turn three more specifically. Uh, Miss Wraith, our spider, great card. Uh, this is pretty much in any deck that has a strategy around spiders or tempo or even control decks can get away with house spider. Uh, the fact that it summons two bodies is the most relevant thing about this card. It's an insane common card and it's very powerful. One of the strongest tools in Noxus. Glimpse Beyond becomes a three of. It's a pretty standard staple in most, in, if not any, Shadow Isles decks. Since most of the time, Shadow Wilds tends to have spiders. So Glimpse Beyond just finds a lot of value. It's just an insane card. There's not much else to talk about. And again, I think I've mentioned this so many times in the past, but at least it's just pretty much like if your strategy, as I've said just previously, is any sort of tempo or spiders, I mean, at least it's just a bit of a staple in those kind of strategies, honestly. Uh, the fact that it just has fearsome is awesome for the early game and summoning spiders is just insane and great. And her, uh, her uh, we don't talk about it very often, but her um, spell, champion spell is actually very strong. Like, it's not as strong as running Elise's Crawling, like in running Crawling Cessation in your deck is not as good as just like sometimes hitting it randomly off the uh, double Elise. 
So, you know, that's good there. Hapless Aristocrat fills out the rest of the deck. It is just a pretty good staple card in a lot of Shadow Isles decks. So that's the deck list right there. We're going to have a few games here. Um, we had a couple interesting games, a couple of unlucky games. But, you know, enjoy the games. And I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, I have left a link to the Mobilitics deck list down in the description. Feel free to go check out the list. Maybe leave them a thumbs up. Thank you very much. And then we have the tools to be control. I feel like we might struggle against some mid-range decks, but you know, we're, st we're pretty strong. Endure Spiders. This could be a matchup where we do find some value from our top end cards, but it's gonna be hard for us to kind of make it that late as well. This is gonna be a weird matchup. We have similar strategies, but it's just, I think his one's a bit faster. The Harrowing obviously costs 10 mana. We can play it on turn 7 in terms of floating mana. That's the earliest we can play it. Uh, we obviously play Aristocrat here. Where are you? I wonder if uh, we'd ever consider running a Thresh in this deck. Uh, nah, it's going to be slow development this turn. Ice Veil Archer is the killer here. Which they are running. I'm pretty cool with this, so I think we, if we're going to attack with Elise, we're going to attack with the Aristocrat as well. It will all be over soon. So young. What's he going to have next turn? He's going to have 4 plus 1. He's going to have 4 mana. No Broad Awakening this turn. Ooh, sorry about that. Shit, Curse Keeper. Oh, and I think this is... No, this, is, this isn't Dua Spiders, but it's like that kind of tweaked version. We'll be passing for now anyway. We'll be playing uh, Broad Awakening next turn. Butcher. I legitimately thought about Vile Feasting it. It is what it is. We'll use one of the Vile Feasts this turn. We'll be tanking some damage this turn. Whatever. It's okay. I will have enough mana for Broad Awakening next turn. Obviously, uh, Withering Rail is going to suck. But at least it stops his development as well. I think Double Broad Awakening gives me the option to be able to play one now. Pretty safely. And then he just Withering Whales. And then we can play another one next turn. Nothing else makes as much sense as playing Broad Awakening. Everything else is far too passive. He also has Broad Awakening. Go ahead. Play with your food. Oh, shit. This is weird. If I was to attack with everything, would he ignore it? Would he block? Yeah, there's no way he just ignores his entire block. I'm convinced I swing with the least too. But I don't really know. This is so strange. This is I think this is the one time where swinging with the least doesn't feel correct. Probably just is. Probably just is. Like, he can't block with the spiders, so he has to block with... Look, I don't know. I'm gonna do it. It's a lot of damage. He's not gonna ignore it. He's not flipping Elise this turn. I'll be shocked if he tanks this damage. I will be really shocked. There's no way you tank this damage just to flip Elise. It cannot be correct. That cannot be correct, dude. Okay, I'll let you do that. You win. You might be sitting on a Withering Whale. I'll respond with a Broad Awakening. No problem. I also have Vile Feast. I cannot afford to play Vile Feast this turn, though. Hmm. 
Who got me there? Who got me there? I really didn't think that felt correct, but maybe it just was for him to do that. The f fruit cake do I do here? Do I play Darius? And just go bolster the wall? We fucking do, alright? He's not gonna have the answers here. He ain't gonna have the answers here. I mean, what's he sitting on? And vengeance? <laughs> I can beat vengeance. So he blocks with the 4-4, four, four, obviously. Everything else he dies to. Which leaves all of these to pretty much clear up everything else. He needs to basically have Withering Whale or Vengeance. And then GG. Game's over. He does not. Or maybe he does. And he's just putting up the blockers anyway. Incredible. How the fuck do I beat? Uh, <laughs> I can't beat Endure coming to the field. I can't beat Atrocity. I would need to top deck. I would need to top deck like... I don't know, actually. Uh, Ruination might work. Holy shit. Are you kidding me? He just has these in his hand. I didn't know that attacking there was going to be a mistake. How do I beat this? I gotta, oh my god, don't beat this! There's no way you slow play here. Don't be a fool. It's attack. <sighs> Rekindler is the most logical choice. If I, if I just go broad right now, it's weird. If I do go Rekindler, if he develops one more thing, I will lose. But if I do something weird, like play Wraith Caller, wait, hang on. What am I supposed to do here? Weirdly enough, I think it's Wraith Caller because then my two feel gonna do it. Wraith Caller is in case he has one more, one more unit to develop. This is just to play around one more development. Like literally, that's the only reason why we did that. Now, I guess it's time for mind games, isn't it? I mean, do I beat Atrocity in hand? I could beat Withering Whale if I play Wraith Caller. I miss Wraith, sorry. Okay. What's better here? Harrowing? Or Rekindler? If, he, if I play Rekindler, I can't exactly even play Broad Awakening. The Harrowing will bring back a bunch of spiders, right? And Miss. We'll bring back a Miss Wraith. And a Darius. It's kind of more, more stats on the board. There's no way my opponent won't play Atrocity if he has it, so. We'll just go for the Harrowing. There's obviously, like, 
kind of like nothing I could do. We do finally get to show off the harrowing, so that's impeccable. Show me your atrocity. Oh my god, he didn't have it. Yeah. Rekindler would have lost us the game there. Wow, that was incredibly close. He um lost the game from developing though. He lost the game from developing, but it's also it's like one of those bluffs that's like you, you feel like you're more convinced that you'll have a higher chance of your development if you develop, which is kind of maybe true. But I think in the end, you see lethal, you go for lethal. He got more punished by the development than he did. I don't know, he didn't know what we were playing though. I guess he was convinced that may have just been sitting on like units in hand and stuff. And I guess that's a power of a ladder when your opponent doesn't know what you're playing. Like let's say for example, um, tournament format, we have that lineup, that deck list exactly. And our opponent knows exactly what we're playing. Um, he goes for lethal there hundred percent. But maybe not. If he sees we have the grasp and vengeance, Regardless, I guess he didn't feel like he had the chance. I'll take the win if I can. Bit of a cheese win, but it is what it is. So ladies and gentlemen, here we are playing some of that uh, harrowing, harrowing Darius by Coach MC. Uh, hopefully we're in for a good time. Uh, we've got pretty early game aggressive spiders and stuff like that. We've got the Wraith Collars because we are pretty heavy in Shadow Isles. And we have a lot of top end, just general Shadow Isles control nonsense. Uh, what are we versing? Culling Strike somehow, I feel, gets a little bit of value in keeping the uh, House Spiders a for sure keep. I like keeping these Noxus cards in the opening hand because it makes Wraith Caller a bit stronger. Um, just a double check, how much early game do we have? We probably could have uh, mulliganed more aggressively, but most of the time we're, we're going to miss that one drop because it's just a single copy of Hapless Aristocrat, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so I don't mind keeping the House Spider for sure and the Wraith Caller. It's a semi-decent curve. Interesting that we could actually potentially go Miss Wraith to buff the Wraith Caller coming up, but I think House Spider just provides a wider body. So I guess I'm going to do that. Okay. Do I have a double swing? No, I think I have a single swing here. We're going to get higher. I don't want the Dredger to trade into the House Spider, right? That can't be correct. I just want to double check something. We have one copy of Ruination too. That's going to be crazy against uh, this deck right now. That's a decent Vile Feast. Um, if he doesn't develop a board, I probably won't Vile Feast this turn. I mean, he's going to have Withering Whale. Maybe the Mist Wraith is still a little bit better. It's a little bit of a threat that just plays around Withering Whale quite a bit. Danger paid. Sweet! We're gonna ping that, right? I have no issue doing this. Hey, I have no issue doing this at all. What's he gonna be sitting on next turn? He's gonna be sitting on 6 mana. I think we just should be developing Wraith Caller most of the time. We develop Wraith Caller, but then he develops something as well, right? So I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. Mostly because I haven't got a play to counter it. So I think we push just a little bit of chip damage now while we can. This could be too passive though. Because we do have heaps of value and like, should we, should we be that concerned about? I'm not entirely sure. No, 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 we're playing too passive. I'm going to play the Wraith Caller. It's also going to buff up the Miss Wraith, and it's just going to make his, uh... It's going to make his Withering Whale pretty good. I think we're going to attack with everything. I'd be shocked to see him take a value block here. He's going to block this, uh... Dredger probably into the 4-3, and then this goes into one of the Miss Wraiths. Outside of that, there's not entirely a lot he can do. He takes, takes the more conservative route with the ping from Vile Feast. I think I'm okay with this. The reason why you do that is because he doesn't have a... Maybe a... Withering Whale on hand. 
Doesn't seem right. We didn't even realistically push that much damage that turn. That's harrowing. If I culling strike this, that's pretty good. I don't mind doing that. I like the, I like the nine card draw as well. He has no reaction to this play either. A calling strike coming in handy right about now, that is for sure. Uh, we're totally going to open attack this turn. I think Broad Awakening is too easily countered. Again, maybe I'm being too passive. This Wraith Call is nice, so we're going to do that instead. Even if it develops a single minion. Like, it can't really Broad Awakening. I don't even think they run Broad Awakening in that deck list. He can play Maokai. Aristocrat. I mean, we're just swinging with everything, right? This Wraith Caller gets blocked up pretty nicely though. But that's okay. If we can kill him even before we get to our top end cards, I'll be happy. We haven't drawn any champions yet, which is a bit of a problem. We're sitting on a Rekindler, that's kind of like a dead card. This harrowing might be a bit awkward to actually develop properly. Oh, how close is he to deep? He is not very close. Thresh. Balls. What do I do here? Do I let him draw cards or do I let him get value from Thresh? I'll just wait to see what he does here. I feel like I don't want him to draw cards. Him drawing cards is kind of like how he wins. If he was to say, I don't know, play Glimpse Beyond. I can't do much about that. But he gets card draw from this anyway if I don't deal with it, so I'm going to take the opportunity to do just that. I mean, if I play my Broad Awakening, I kind of get ruined by his Thresh leveling up. Should I be concerned about that at all? I feel like he's not sitting on a Withering Whale. He played his hands pretty weird before. I'm going to do this anyway. Because we're not really doing much else with our mana. What I can hope for is a Darius top deck. Because that's going to be really hard for him to deal with that board state by that point. Fortunately not. So we should probably swing, um... 1-2. We should go Fear Sims first, right? Does it really matter? I mean, he blocks one. Can't block the other one. I guess the 4-2 comes last. Actually, no. I think Fear Sims coming go last. I'm not entirely sure if it matters. I'm trying to think of cards, reasons why it would matter. It just means that I have a chance to maintain my miss race because it forces him to possibly have to block into these units first. So I guess these are more higher value cards, so we'll attack with them last. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Withering Whale. Can I do much about that? Unfortunately, he's a uh, Thresh will level up too. So maybe ordering did matter. Let's double check if ordering mattered. It did matter. But I think you would have just blocked um Fear Sims go first, because it's the only thing that can block Thresh. Thresh blocks into this. We could have stopped his Thresh from leveling up, but slight misplay, I guess. Ordering did matter a little bit. I could have possibly withering whaled as well to save my Miss Wraith which actually may have caused the Thresh not to level up. Yeah, definitely. That could have been the play. That should have been the play. My mistake. If he's sitting on another Thresh, bad news for us. I actually could have stopped the Thresh from leveling up and maintained my Miss Wraith. Uh, weak plays in hindsight. Yeah, I should have 100% uh, hundred percent with him in the wild. I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't like think to turn through enough. I hate to see him sitting on a Nautilus. We're almost in a decent spot. I think we should play Darius this turn though, right? We should probably just block into the uh, Nautilus to be honest. And then we'll just go balls deep with Harrowing next turn. And then what does he do? Ruination? There you are. I guess I can't stop that. 
That's okay. He's sitting on a pretty empty hand. Uh, Withering Whale doesn't change much for us immediately, except for the fact that we can clear off the Dead Bloom. I don't want to tank 13 to the face. I know they're running Astrocity. Definitely don't want to tank 13 to the face, nor do I want to tank 7. So this is the line that we'll take for now. I guess the next question is... What do I play this turn? I think it's got to be Harrowing. I think it's definitely got to be Harrowing. Although he could just somehow sustain. The problem is he can definitely like sustain and then we just die coming back into our turn. <sighs> it obliterated Darius too. That's incredibly sad. It didn't even die and we couldn't have done anything about it. So I guess we'll go for the harrowing. Balls to the wall plays. Now I just gotta hope that um... He can't dodge all these. What is happening right about now? So that's an attacking... Do I even swing with the 1-1 spider? What does this look like? What it looks like is that the dead bloom is going to block one of the six twos for sure. I can stop him from doing that. Wonder if this is the order that we do. It didn't really matter what we did. I think I was meant to swing with a 6-2 first. If I swing with the 6-2 first, he blocks it with say Dead Bloom, and then my six my next 6-2 comes in, he's sitting at 9. He blocks it with Nautilus. Somehow I feel like the ordering did not matter at all. I mean, there's not really a way we can survive this turn. We need to like top deck vengeance, I guess. Kind of keeps us in the game. Unfortunately, that is not the top deck that we want. Like, what do I even do here? I cannot survive at all. Get unlucky. This is some sort of burn deck with Teemo. Sounds like fun. I think we'll be keeping Kali Strike. Mm, this is decent curve. Somehow I feel like I should be fishing for the hapless aristocrat though. We'll probably draw into a Mist Wraith, right? This is a bad looking hand. We have ways of dealing with the Teemo. Where's my axe? I don't have ways of dealing with a fucking rearguard sergeant. That card's so toxic. Unless he slow plays this turn, I can punish it with House Spider. So if I develop House Spider here, I still tank two. By calling strike now, I have a guaranteed way of clearing the disciple before it gets any value, which it will. Hmm. Somehow I feel like this is correct. Like Wally has no mana. This is probably gonna save me face damage in the future. I tank three for now, but without a doubt, that's gonna save us damage. I think it's just a lease and chill. Come uh, most of the time, it's not much that can block a lease. Disciple can block it, sort of. Back to back, uh, a lease is really annoying. We still have to attack, though. We'll tank the damage. Now, we, we saved ourselves some damage. Now, this is a position that we're in where we can make up a bit of time there. Bringing this down to 2 HP kind of means that. 
if he used to play, I don't know, uh, Blood Transfusion or something, he'll bring it down to one. At least I can Bile Feast it to get rid of it completely. Uh, pretty insane if he slow plays here, actually. So if I was to play Broad Awakening, that's just going to be the most correct play. Nothing else saves me as much damage. He'll definitely swing and I'll tank the damage from Teemo, but that will be about it for today. Hopefully. I'm actually going to consider using the Elise to block the Disciple. Okay, so he's sitting on a Blood Transfusion. So if he's sitting on Blood Transfusion... No, this would still just be correct, even if he's sitting on Blood Transfusion. Uh, pardon me. I mean, he'll... That's pretty toxic. A double Vile Feast. That should give me a little bit of sustain. Probably gonna play Broad Awakening here though this turn. Is that correct? Somehow I feel like Vile Feast plus House Spider is better. Somehow I feel like it's better because I could have a good chance of clearing the Teemo now. I mean, if he's, not, if he's running a Noxium Fever, that's kind of unlucky because I feel like, what is he cutting to run Teemo? Getting rid of Teemo now just seems good. Then we can just go super aggressive. We have to go super aggressive this turn. Super, super aggressive. Okay. I could have attacked then, but that's not aggressive enough. I need to push, push as much damage now because he could very much be killing me next turn with like any weird combination. Currently, can't really beat Double Decimate safely. Leveling up Elise is great and all, but I need to somehow make it to my... If I make it to my next turn, I'll win, but I'm pretty... I'm kind of convinced that I won't even make it to next turn. Because I can't block this. He can't blood transfusion though, but he can buff it. Is he running buffs? Okay, the game's over. That was really uh, anticlimactic. I mean, realistically, like, what... We want to curve out. We want to hit Darius. We want to hit, like, Wraith Call into Darius. Keep putting on the pressure, and then... The harrowing should help us against control decks, right? Finally get to find the one drop. Harrowing... They run two denies, Karma Lux. I'll keep the Wraith Call out. I think we're, it's going to be a slow enough match where I'll make it to Wraith Caller on curve and kind of pressuring him quite a lot. We're gonna hope that we dodge the Eye of the Dragon. That can kind of slow us down quite a lot. We're pretty much just gonna slam things down on curve. What do our three drops look like? I feel like we're, we're lacking the three drop department, right? Yeah. We have no productive player to make on turn three. But hopefully... That's okay though. I mean, there's 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 a big lack of three drops in the game. I wonder if Frenzied Skidora might make a fit into this deck. So we'll be passing this turn. We'll be taking damage for sure as well. Actually, I can chump block with the Aristocrat. Pardon me. That makes more sense. What would you cut? Like, maybe you can consider taking out Kong Strike for Frenzied Skitter. It also boosts your Wraith Caller. Gives you something to do on turn three. Because right now, our development is kind of like not really there. We do float mana, which allows us to do like Broad Awakening. But I think most of the time, I want to be, be playing Wraith Caller. He chose not to swing there. I guess he didn't see any value in it. I kind of did though. 
I mean, what are we doing this turn? What's he want to do? I'm going to pull up his deck list really quickly. Go to the meta. Fox Karma. He wants to play cards like... They're not actually running Repost. They are running Single Combat. I think it's just Wraith Caller though. Wraith Caller just feels good. We of course missed our Legion's buff because that's the luck we get. Ah, dude, that's such a bummer. I'll be tilted to see if a top card is calling strike, that's for sure. I mean, I don't see any value in not swinging. The Nova running barrier. Okay, we just swing. You can't play Radiant Guardian too. I gotta be careful for the Radiant Guardian when it comes down. This block is kind of not too bad. They do run three times, uh, three copies of Health Potion. Which you will find a bit of value from. They only run one deny. If I can make it to turn 10, I could scare him, spook him quite a lot. There's no way for me to deal with the Unyielding Spirit when it inevitably comes down. But hopefully we can just pressure him down a lot more prior to that. I'm going to be kind of careful letting stuff die this turn. I just don't want him to get a good Radiant Guardian. So I'm actually just going to block like this. He wants to play Radiant Guardian, clearly. I'm not going to allow him to do that. Not for good value. I feel like it's just Broad Awakening. Broad Awakening gets rid of the... Uh... I'm just going for it. He denies. That's like all his mana. He has four left over. He can't develop anything. Like, I wouldn't be surprised to see him deny this. I mean, he looks at our deck and he just thinks, uh, he's running like... He really values getting the, uh... He really values getting the Radiant Guardian down. Justice will be served. I'm still gonna flip Elise. I won't have enough mana for Avengers this turn. But flipping Elise is not too bad. Let me change into something I don't think this... Playing for the Vengeance value matters. I don't have enough mana for Vengeance. Somehow I feel like I'm supposed to Vengeance prior to the attack. Now this is probably the best line to make. Are you going to deny this? You didn't deny the Broad Awakening. Are you a four head player? Five head player? You can't Unyielding Spirit this Radiant Guardian. So hopefully he's not sitting on another one. I'd hate to see him Unyielding Spirit onto a Radiant Guardian. That's going to be my biggest issue. Will? Okay, you can't play it this turn, so that, that's fine. They're pushing a lot of damage. In the end, we are a pretty aggressive deck. Just with some pretty crazy top end cards. Fight with my spirit, not my okay, does he have a 2 mana spell? Health potion? No. I probably would have health potion there if I had it. I can ignore his minions. I don't have to let anything die. Deny him complete value from Radiant Guardian. We'll just have to slowly start playing into these, uh... Will of Ionias. Not all well. Obviously I'm not blocking that dude. Somehow I feel like we're gonna start playing Darius. He is leveled as well. He's probably sitting on like quadruple Will of Onias. I mean, sure. So, slow development helps us to play into a uh, Will of Ionia better. Nothing else really concerns me. He pretty much has to play Will of Ionia this turn. If I just go in for the attack now, I somehow feel like it's pretty weak. 
slow development makes a lot of sense here. I've got the little spiderlings to help us trade into annoying stuff. You won't be able to get prior when leveling up Lux and using the Final Spark before I get to attack. So that we'll, will we not be getting hit by any Final Sparks this turn? This is it a tough position for him to be in? I think the most obvious play is it's just to do nothing. Maybe he puts a Grizzled Ranger onto the field or something, just to block my units. So if he goes for the will, I can use the Vile Feast. Just to bring up another spider for blocking stuff. Okay. So now we're attacking. It's quite obvious I'm going to pull this down. Or is it? Is it honestly? There's weird ways I can play this turn where nothing dies. It's chances are something's going to die. He can't play Radiant Guy in this turn. What am I thinking? We're obviously pulling this down. I feel like we're not doing that actually. We're pulling Lux down. This is kind of just the place. So he plays one will. I've got the Vile Feast for flexing against not a lot. Concussive Palm doesn't also works. He just needs will here, right? Or Concussive Palm. There's five cards. High chance he has one of them. So we're not winning this turn unless he's really unlucky. He's really unlucky. Oh my goodness, he's really unlucky. That's such a bummer for my opponent, dude. We're not even making it towards the end, dude, to play out like our harrowing and stuff. 